This video is not intended to prepare personnel to implement ventilation changes without the assistance of a qualified industrial hygienist or healthcare ventilation engineer. Welcome to video one in our Project First Line series on creating negative pressure rooms and areas. Today's HVAC systems have drastically improved the thermal comfort of patients, staff, and visitors within healthcare facilities. But the importance of HVAC systems extends far beyond just thermal comfort. HVAC systems have an important role to play in keeping germs from spreading in healthcare facilities. HVAC systems also control humidity, indoor air quality, and even pressure relationships between individual rooms, such as a facility's Airborne Infection Isolation Rooms, or AII Rooms for short. AII Rooms are special rooms that are always sucking air in from surrounding areas, making them negative pressure rooms. They are designed for patients who have a known or suspected airborne infection, such as tuberculosis, measles, or chickenpox. There are several important aspects of AII rooms that facilities operations personnel must understand to ensure that everyone in the building remains safe and that patients are getting the best possible care. AII rooms have a high air change rate at 12 air changes per hour, meaning that they fully replace the air within the room 12 times each hour. These specialized rooms are also required to maintain at least negative 0.01 inches of water column pressure at all times while occupied. Why is the need to remain under negative pressure so important? Well, think of it this way. If a patient has a known or suspected infection that can be spread through the air and their room goes from negative pressure to positive pressure, the air in their room will be pushed out of the room instead of being sucked in. This means every person in the area where the air is now flowing out is potentially exposed to the infection and could get sick. Even if they don't get sick, those who are exposed may need additional testing or preventative treatment. They may also have undue stress and anxiety because of their exposure. This is also a reportable event and creates a lot of extra work for the infection prevention team because they must track each person who is exposed, sometimes for several weeks. That's why ensuring that an infectious patient's room remains under negative pressure is critical to facility operations and the health of each person in the area. There are several ways to track negative pressure. One way is through the building automation system using room pressure monitors. Other methods include local room pressure monitors, a manometer, or visual-based devices such as a ball in the wall. Whatever the method, it is essential to ensure that your staff is thoroughly trained on their role and knows what to do if a room shifts from negative to neutral or positive pressure. It is also very important for the facility's operations team to perform routine pressure checks according to the facility's policy. Additionally, planned preventive maintenance on the HVAC system is important to ensure the room remains negative. Since HVAC systems designed for AII rooms serve high-risk areas, it is also a best practice to perform an annual test and balance, or TAB, on the system and calibrate any diaphragm-based pressure sensors to ensure that the room is truly performing as intended. Who knew that a single negative pressure room could be so important? While most of the time, new AII rooms are exhausted directly to the outside, at times a facility might need to flex and increase the number of negative pressure rooms by converting existing rooms. There are several ways to achieve negative pressure, and in this series, we are going to explore four different options, starting with the best practice, exhausting directly outside. 